Hello everyone, uh, my name is Harsha Nikhar. Good afternoon and welcome to B-Sides Las Vegas. Uh, today we are here with uh, Brian Harrell and Garrett Stroop presenting their talk on you have gained plus two perception, level up your red team with a new capability maturity module. And before we begin, I have a few announcements. First of all, we would like to thank our sponsors, especially our diamond sponsor Adobe and our gold sponsor Prisma Cloud, Blue Cat, Toyota. It's with their support along with our other sponsors, donors and volunteers that make this event possible. These talks are being live streamed and as a courtesy to our speakers and audience, we would like to ask you to check to make sure that your cell phones are in silent mode. And if you have any question, please use the audience microphone so that YouTube can hear you too. So with that, let's get started and please welcome our speakers. What up nerds? Congratulations on gaining plus two perception by attending this presentation today. We're going to be talking about a capability maturity model we released earlier this year. If you don't know what one of those is, it's okay. We're going to cover it. As you might tell, this is a Fallout themed presentation. If you haven't played those, you should go do that. Bonus points if you can get them all in before Starfield comes out later this year. But a little bit about us, not that anyone cares. My name is Brent. I run the red team at Humana. And with me today is Garrett Strop. He is the director of Cyber Threat Simulation, which includes red team, pen testing, and breach and attack simulation. The only stats you need to know for me is that if you see me at an airport, you better hope you're not on my flight because I have absolutely zero luck. It will be delayed. And my charisma level depends on how much you like sarcasm. If you don't like sarcasm, you won't like me, but the feeling's mutual, so it's okay. A little bit about the agenda for today. We're going to start with what is a capability maturity model and the model that we built, a little bit of the history of how we got there, why you should use this one. And then we're going to do a pretty lightning speed coverage of some of the key elements of this model. We only have 20 minutes. We're going to try and leave time for questions. And we'll wrap up with some implementation ideas of how we did this at Humana to get your juices flowing on how you can take this back to your teams. So what's your special? If you've played any RPG or watched Stranger Things and got a little bit of Dungeons and Dragons, you've probably heard of strength and intelligence and dexterity and whatever else. These are stats that affect your character, how much health they have, how much damage they do, uh, all those sorts of things. Well, in the Fallout series, special is that set of internal stats, strength, perception, endurance, etc. But beyond what some other games do, these stats don't just affect how much health you have or how much damage you do, they affect what perks you can get. And there's a big old perk tree with a whole bunch of interesting things, passive and active, that you can add points to, but they're locked behind certain levels of these stats. So if you want to be an uber sniper, you've got to dump some points into perception to get to those perks. If you want everything to blow up in a nice gory mess of giblets, you've got to level up your luck to get the bloody mess perk. But if you're like me, you've probably spent a lot of time at the start of a new character trying to figure out what am I going to do? What do I want to uh, get from that perk chart? How am I going to do this from a leveling standpoint? When do I need to put per points in perception or whatever else? But how many times do we do that in our professional lives? Probably not quite as often as we would like, right? So as we talk today, consider the capability maturity model your special. As you focus on maturing certain elements that are within this model for your team, you're going to be unlocking new capabilities, new abilities that will provide your team with better aptitude to conduct operations or better ways to provide value to the organization. So with that, I'll pass it over to Garrett to talk about maturity models. So this talk is normally an hour long. We're going to fly through it. We've only got about 15 to 20 minutes today. Traditional capability maturity model started in software engineering. You've got five levels. Starts at level one. This simply means you can do the thing, whatever that thing is, whatever the subject is. Level two means you can do it, but you have a repeatable, consistent outcome. You know what to expect. Level three, we define it with documentation, so it's easily understood by not only that team performing the service, but also others. You could think an auditor in this case, oftentimes asking how do you do what you do. Well, if you're not at least a level three, good luck. Level four, we introduce data so that you can measure and manage whatever that subject is. And level five is all about continuous improvement where you're driving efficiencies and optimization. Here in a little bit, we'll jump into the inventory section, which is the 10,000 foot view of the model. But Brent's gonna speak to a couple of instances where you likely don't wanna be a level five. It doesn't make sense. And that's gonna vary based on your organizational uh, requirements. 
If you go to redteams.fyi, you'll see where we started. Redteams.fyi was a great start for capability and maturity models for Red Team, but there are a few things we wanted to improve upon. Before I get there, the redteams.fyi model, it's real lightweight, it's easy to absorb, it's easy to implement. Um, but if you follow the subjects, it's not as consistent as we would like. It doesn't always build upon itself. So we decided to build a model with a common format. Selfishly, whenever our executives are talking about the future, the strategy, the funding of our security organization, OFSEC never had a seat at the table. They're not talking about red team, pen testing, breach attack simulation, purple teaming, because it's not built into those deprecated models. I wanted something that could slide right into that. So in this case, red team in particular was able to have a seat at the table. The standard descriptors, all this means is that when you're talking about vulnerability management or configuration management, asset management, any of the other topics that the models speak to, level three is a level three. It's all about it being defined. Level five is a level five. It's consistent and easy to understand by everybody in the room that might not be in a red team. And then we expanded the subjects. Uh, the red teams.fyi model, great model, but we were, there were a handful of subjects that we wanted to focus on, which Brent is going to jump into now. Thank you very much. So at the 10,000 foot view, this is the overview of the model. You got four categories, 27 subjects, obviously not evenly distributed here. There's no secret sauce with these categories. You're going to find these in other capability maturity models, people, processes, technology, program. It's not that, uh, not that crazy. They're just a way to bucket the different things that you're going for. The subjects are those special stats that you're trying to dump uh, points into to, to level up. Typically, you would do your reporting at the category level, though. You're going to say I'm a 3.2 out of 5 on processes overall. You wouldn't necessarily report on a subject-by-subject -subject basis. Now, before we dig into some of the high points of these things, I want to throw a few caveats. Garrett mentioned one of them. I was just talking to another red team a couple weeks ago. They wanted to make some changes to the model because their team was only three people. I can relate. Our team is four, right? As a result, they, couldn't, they didn't feel they could get to a level five in one of the areas because there just was not the, the manpower to back it up. And so they wanted to uh, try and reduce that a little bit because, hey, we're a really mature team. Why can't we get to a level five? I just want to encourage everyone, you don't have to get there. And a perfect example is, is in our organization, through the editing process, we ended up adding a subject for relationships with HR. The organization that brought that up uh, was really seeing fruit with that. Humana, they're not a great stakeholder for us. They don't really impact our operations. We're leaving that at level one. There's only so much time in a day you cannot get to everything, just like you can't get to all the perks in Fallout unless you add mods, right? You can only focus on the things you have time for. That's number one, you don't have to get to level five. You're trying to get to the place where it's acceptable for your leadership and works for your organization. Uh, second one, Vault Tech recommends that this is for internal teams that are staffed. What do I mean by that? The internal side, there's gonna be consultancies that can use elements of this but they're gonna care about things that aren't in the model, like having a lab that accounts for all of their uh, clients, so CrowdStrike, Microsoft, whatever, versus an internal team, they just need to match the one EDR product. The other side, they're gonna not care about some of the things that are in the model. They don't have to have enduring relationships with our organization's legal team or our defenders, right? So it's coming at this from a perspective of internal. If you want to write an addendum for this for consultancies, we'd love to talk. Uh, but the second part of this, is that it's staffed. And that does not mean an offsec manager who oversees third party assessments. It doesn't mean pen testers who sometimes do red teamy things because those are different fields. And it certainly doesn't mean Larry who stays late on Thursdays. He's an insider threat. You should take him out into the wasteland and leave him for death clause. So processes is the second largest category in here. We often care about the what. We love hacking things. We like obtaining shells. Uh, we're very interested in that. But how we do that is incredibly important because you might come across a flaw and do what you need to do in this particular operation and nine months later, 10 months later, you come across the same thing, but you can't remember what you did because you didn't document it in a knowledge base somehow and you got to recreate the wheel and figure out how do I do this again. You also might pick bad operations. If you're targeting something and you write up all these findings about this cool little network segment that you attacked and then leadership tells you, hey, we're decommissioning that in a month. No one's going to do anything about it. 
not the greatest uh, generation of data there. So how we do what we do is really going to ultimately reduce your shell acquisition time, get you back to the things that you love, but in a more consistent way. This is really the core of maturity here. Now technology is the what? Obviously, if we want to go get shells, we've got to have the tools to do that. Uh, we can talk about the how all day long, but the rubber meets the road here. You got to have the tooling, you got to have the infrastructure. And that's what this is focused on. I'm not going to belabor the point too much other than to say that the focus here with the maturity model piece is on getting operational capability that fits your organization. If you have a very immature security org that's maybe just starting, perhaps Invoke Mimicats and PowerShell is going to work for you. It's probably not going to work in a different place, and so you're going to have to go do some development. But the focus of the maturity model itself is on the, uh, your ability to meet your operational needs and requirements not on, hey, I got to go buy Nighthawk or I have to develop a custom C2 if it's not operationally relevant for you. Now, the other big thing is to test, have a test environment. You don't get a little uh, fat man in Fallout and go run it right at a death claw because you're probably going to underestimate how much arc is in that thing and you're going to miss and then it's going to be up in your face. Maybe try it on a bloat fly or a rad scorpion if you're feeling sexy. Try that with your tools. Make sure it works. Make sure that you understand how it's working so that you can give the blue team telemetry as well. Um, that's an incredibly important addition to not just having the tool set, but really understanding it. Next one up is people. This is by far the biggest category, 11 of the subjects here. Seven of them are on relationships with other teams. Now in the game, you're called the lone survivor. You're not actually alone though, you're trying to meet other people, gain companions, trade with folks, and you have to do the same thing here. At the end of the day, we are not actually attackers. We are part of the defensive apparatus of the organization. We just happen to attack things in order to find those holes. But if we have an adversary relationship with our defenders, our engineers, or we don't have a good relationship with legal who isn't going to back us up when we do something stupid, that's all problems. You're not alone in the wasteland here. You have to develop those relationships. On the flip side, focusing internally, you got to make sure that there's time to go find those skill books in the wasteland and spend some time with R&D and training to build the skill sets internally. And that's one of the first things I asked for when I joined Humana, which Garrett has been very supportive of, is, is Friday's R&D day. What new things can we be bringing to the table by thinking about things, by doing some research and developing new tools? And last but not least, if my slides will advance, that's too far, program. People probably consider this even less sexy than processes, but if you're not telling people about all the raider bases you're taking down and the super mutants you're killing, what are you really doing? Because you're part of the organization. The people who pay your bills probably aren't going to see a lot of value in that, and they're not likely to support the things that you need to do to get to higher levels of maturity in other areas. So focusing on aligning the red team strategy with the organization strategy and vice versa, helping the organization leverage the red team to drive their strategy through good metrics, uh, through understanding what product lines you have available through offensive security and red team in particular is a great way to coordinate with leadership. Now, one thing that's really important for us is that knowledge sharing piece. We're out in this massive wasteland where there's a whole bunch of dangers and it's not Humana versus Cigna versus any other insurance company or Google versus Facebook or anything like that. It's us against the same people. We're all trying to defend our organization against the same types of people that are attacking other organizations. And we use so much knowledge from the security field that it's imperative as your team matures to speak back into that. Now, R&D doesn't happen overnight, right? I'm not saying dump all your coolest tools onto GitHub so they can be signatured and unusable anymore. But when it's operationally reasonable to do so, or you can do something like a conference talk and share an idea, uh, that is the hallmark of a mature team. So with that, I'm going to pass it to Garrett on a few ideas on how to implement this. We started with scoring. We had six folks, uh, red team, program management, myself, score where we are today and where we desire to be by end of year for each of the 27 subjects. Through this, there was a lot of debate. Uh, we consolidated all those responses. They were done independently, so nobody really knew what the other individual was scoring. And we had a lot of friendly arguing about where we thought we were. What's great about this though is it drives unified vision and alignment amongst the team, especially with the smaller teams, right? A lot of red teams are small. If you don't have that team marching toward the same goals, you're probably going to be quite a bit less effective. 
that happens right here, getting everybody on the same page with where you are and what good looks like. Once you understand that, you need to build the roadmap to get there. For us, we use Miro, just a, you know, virtual stickies on virtual whiteboard to throw all of our, all of our ideas out there. We do that independently as well so that we don't get groupthink. We consolidate the like ideas, build a theme, and then we start decomposing that into workable chunks in Azure DevOps. So we build our epics, features, stories, tasks, etc. from that, continuously refining and prioritizing that backlog. Selfishly, what I really like about this is it allows us to be pretty dynamic and fluid. So if there is a risk that arises or an unforeseen business initiative that we need to inject ourselves into, because of how our backlog is built and defined, it allows us to be really flexible. We can hit the pause button on something, build an op or campaign regardless of size to satisfy the business need. Again, that's our purpose, is to serve the business, um, and pivot. The full model, uh, it's on Brent's GitHub. However, if you just wanna see the website, which has most of the model as well, uh, just not an easy to uh, modify form, go to redteammaturity.com. We've got the typo squat domain as well, so if you accidentally drop an M, no sweat, you'll get redirected. If you trust us, pull the Excel, enable macros, have fun. If you don't trust us, pull the CSV. And again, uh, while we built the initial version internally at one of our summits, it wouldn't be polished if it wasn't for some of the help from Andy, Matt, and Johan, from Zoom, Charter, and EA, respectively. I think we have just a few minutes left if there are any questions. One additional comment, the slides are also on my GitHub, uh, the BC Herald. So if you want these, I also put the template up there if you wanted to have fun with the template. So that is there for your review. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>